All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, get started with uh, our new edition of the Quarter Theory webinar. Welcome aboard, everybody. Happy Friday. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to analyze some of the currency, major currency pairs that we monitor on a daily basis through the methodologies of a new currencies trading method that I've created. I call it the quarter theory. Now, many of you are probably familiar, familiar with who I am. I'm the uh, creator of the quarter theory method. I uh, started allthingsforex.com about four years ago and uh, also another website uh, which is might be a little bit ahead of its time, I guess. Not a lot of people are posting or uh, blogging or vlogging, as some say, but uh, you're welcome to check it out. It's www.tradertape.com for uh, investor trader and investor video content. So it's mostly a video website. I also wrote my quarter theory and put it in a book called The Quarter Theory, The uh, Revolutionary New Foreign Currencies Trading Method. It was published in 2010. You're welcome to check out my website, www.allthingsforex.com. Or simply go to our friend's website at fx3.com, and uh, you can order it there as well. Now, I'd like to thank, first of all, our friends from FX3 for putting together another uh, webinar. And um, with that said, let's go ahead and just go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do today is, uh, for those of you not familiar with my quarter theory, I'll give you some of the basics. What the quarter theory is, is a, uh, with the quarter theory I propose, that uh, currency exchange rates fluctuations are not random, meaning that simply there's no chaos when prices fluctuate. And that's for pretty much all prices uh, in general. And by, by the way, I'm working on um, the quarter theory for uh, stocks, indices, commodities, futures, and so forth. And so uh, watch for that coming up soon. So I propose that prices, do not fluctuate randomly, but rather in an organized manner. And I propose with the quarter theory that every significant price move occurs from one large quarter point targeting another large quarter point. So what are the large quarter points? Well, when it comes to currency exchange rates, we know that between two major whole numbers, there is 1,000 pips or 10 cents. Let's, for example, take a look at this next slide and uh, look at the two major large quarter points in the euro dollar exchange rate. That was a dollar 30 and a dollar and 40 cents. This is where the euro dollar exchange rate has been trading with them for a number of months now between the major large quarter points at a dollar 30 and a dollar and 40 cents. If you look at the arrow here, that would give you the current 1,000 pip range, 10 cents in terms of pips, is 1,000 pips, right? So I divide these 1,000 pip ranges into four equal parts, or four large quarters of 250 pips. And what I propose is that prices move in terms of quarters, and they fluctuate within these 1,000 pip ranges in an organized manner, from one large quarter point targeting another large quarter point. So there's no chaos, there's no randomness, but rather organized, systematic price moves that occur from one large quarter point to another large quarter point. The most recent example for how the quarter theory could have helped the trader was the attempt for the Australian dollar to move above parity with the U.S. dollar. Now, we know the parity level is very important price level. Obviously, um, this is the benchmark, major large quarter point, for any major currency pair. We want to pay attention to these major large quarter points because they also are very important price junctions. They're major psychological levels, as a lot of traders would call them. They're also what I call major whole numbers. In our base 10 numeral system, these are very important junctions and levels, but especially important are these major large quarter points because they signify the beginning of a new 
1,000 foot range and the end of the existing 1,000 foot range. For example, again, if, it, if we take a look at the 1,000 foot range between uh, $1.30 and $1.40, where the euro dollar exchange rate is right now, and by the way, it's trading at the half point of that uh, 1,000 foot range, around $1.35 in recent days, you will see that uh, the major large quarter point of the dollar and 30 cents, for example, marks the end of the current 1,000 foot range. And if the euro were to continue to drop below dollar 30, then it would make an attempt to transition its exchange rate into a new 1,000 foot range, which would be the, the range below dollar 30, between dollar and 30 and a dollar and 20 cents. Those are the major whole numbers, major large quarter points that would uh, define the new 1,000 foot range which the euro dollar pair, by the way, made a couple of attempts here in the recent months to transition within. But I will explain in a few minutes why, what were the signs that we didn't have a successful 1,000 foot range transition, and how can a trader recognize that and actually take advantage of uh, the fact that we don't have a 1,000 foot range transition? What does it mean? Another example that I wanted to show you, though, and, and to start with, speaking about these 1,000 foot range transitions and a practical application of my quarter theory would be the most recent attempt for the Aussie dollar currency pair, for the Australian dollar, to transition its exchange rate versus the US dollar into a brand new 1,000 foot range, which was also um, above which uh, major large quarter point there at parity level were some all-time highs or at least highs since the times when the Australian dollar was allowed to freely fluctuate in the open currency markets, foreign exchange markets in 1982 or 1983, if I'm not mistaken. I call it an all-time high, some call it multi-year high, um, since the Australian government allowed the Aussie to fluctuate. So the example that I wanted to give you is this. Obviously here we see in the month of uh, October and November the market pricing in the further U.S. dollar weakness because of the Fed coming in on November 3rd, announcing the interest rate decision to um, offer that QE number two, the so-called quantitative easing program expansion, another round of quantitative easing, 600 billion uh, more of Treasury bond purchases that the Fed announced, which causes further debasement of the U.S. dollar. So the market's pricing that in. You can see the U.S. dollar carry trade, especially because the Austra um, Australian dollar has a significant yield advantage. Interest rates in benchmark interest rate in Australia, 4.75%. In the U.S., practically 0%. And the Fed, on top of that, gets ultra accommodative, continues to stimulate to buy more treasury bonds and so forth and so forth. So this is what the market's pricing in here. And it's obviously reaching the Aussie dollar pair, reaches that major large quarter point, the benchmark parity level there for two currencies. Reaches it, but pulls back from it. There is no transition into the new 1,000 foot range at that time, above $1. So what will be the new 1,000 foot range between the parity level is $1? The current 1,000 foot range was between 0.90 cents and $1. That's the 1,000 foot there. When the Aussie dollar pair begins to transition above the parity level, then it enters the new 1,000 foot range, which is the 1,000 foot range between $1 and $1.10. And a very, very important first large quarter of each new 1,000 foot range, during these 1,000 foot range transitions, traders should very closely monitor the first large quarter and the price behavior of our currency pair within these first large quarters of 250 pips of a brand new 1,000 foot range, which is the 1,000 foot range. So that first large quarter for the Aussie dollar exchange rate was the quarter between $1 and $1.0250 large quarter points. Some of you would recall immediately after the Fed's announcement, the Aussie dollar pair, the Aussie continued to rally and strengthen and in the days after the Fed announcement on November 3rd, the Australian dollar reached the sky as almost dollar and two cents, which was uh, dollar zero one eighty two or um, if I'm not mistaken where the highs right there where my cursor is pointing at. So at this point there will be obviously an attempt from the Aussie dollar pair to transition its exchange rate 
into the new 1,000 foot range between $1 and $1.10. But what are the signs that I explain also in my book, The Quarters Theory, for a successful 1,000 foot range transition? The first thing that we require is to see whether or not the Australian dollar, for example, in this case, will complete the first large quarter of the new 1,000 foot range. Will it move from $1, the parity level, to complete the entire large quarter by approaching the large quarter point at the dollar zero two fifty. It's practically impossible, as you will note, for those of you who are not familiar with my quarter theory, in the future you will note for the rest of your trading trading careers, that in most instances these large quarter points are actually discussed. They look like they're not being reached, overshot, they're disguised. Not a lot of traders can uh, at first glance recognize these large quarter points. Because there's always going to be a number that's either a little short of a large quarter point or a little bit above a large quarter point, or uh, which I call a shortcoming, uh, undershoot or overshoot of these important price levels in a quarter steer. And I'll give you an example in a few minutes, once again, how the large quarter point of the dollar zero two fifth was recently disguised by a little bit of an overshoot above it. It's practically impossible in uh, trillions of dollars of a market volume on a daily basis, such as the Forex market, for prices to stop exactly at a large quarter point. They either can come short of it or it could, they could surpass it by a few pips. But what the quarter theory recognizes and focuses on is what's the important part of these price moves, and that's <clears throat> whether a large quarter point has been or a large quarter has been successfully completed. And so I've designated, knowing that it's practically in most instances going to be impossible to for prices to stop exactly at the large quarter point and reach it exactly up to the pip. I've created the rule of the quarter theory, which where I designate the area of one small quarter of 25 pips, because just as you, in a base 10 numeral system, obviously, just as, it, as one can divide everything in four equal parts. As I do, I divide the 1,000 pip range into four equal parts or four large quarters of 250 pips. Um, so one can do with the 100 pip ranges between two whole numbers. For example, the range between $1 and a dollar and one cent is a one cent range. But in terms of pips, that is 100 pips. With the base 10 numeral system, we can divide that 100 pip range into four equal parts. And that is how I derive the so-called small quarters of the quarters theory, which is the small quarters of 25 pips. So I designate the area within 25 pips from a targeted large quarter point. And as, as long as prices reach within 25 pips or one small quarter, of 25 pips from a targeted large quarter point, then we consider the quarter as successfully completed. In a first attempt for the Aussie dollar pair to complete this quarter between one dollar and a dollar and two cents, that attempt was not successful. That quarter on a first attempt here in the month of November was not successfully completed. As many of you would recall, the Aussie dollar pair reached the size dollar zero one eighty two. It stayed about 70 pips away from the targeted large quarter point at the dollar zero two fifty. Now, what happens as a result of an unsuccessful completion of a large quarter? I explained that in my book as well. See, because every significant price move begins and ends at a large quarter point, there's a trader utilizing my quarter theory always knows what the starting point of the next price move is and what could be the end point of that price move. When prices begin to work on a large core, a large core between $1 and $1.0250, we keep an eye on that uh, quarter whether it will be successfully completed. Just because prices begin to work on a large quarter, however, that doesn't mean that the large quarter will be successfully completed. So as a result of a unsuccessful completion of a, of a quarter, 
a, a, a quarter theory trader who is familiar with the quarter theory methodologies knows what the outcome of unsuccessful completion of a quarter will be. In most instances, as I explain in my book, as a result of unsuccessful completion of a large quarter, we can expect a reversal that takes prices back to the preceding large quarter point, which in the case of the Aussie US dollar pair on the first attempt to work on that very important first large quarter of a new 1,000 foot range, that quarter was not completed. Aussie dollar pair reached the skies dollar 0182, made several attempts to continue further for a number of days. This is, by the way, a daily chart of the Aussie dollar pair. And then we can see that reversal that took prices back to the preceding large quarter point. But this was not only a reversal back to the preceding large quarter point. In terms of those 1,000 foot range transitions, the unsuccessful completion of the quarter between $1 and the dollar zero to 50 in November has another significance. What was that? That was the significance that the transition of the Aussie US dollar exchange rate into a new 1,000 foot range was not successful. And as a result of unsuccessful 1,000 pip range transition, we can anticipate that a currency pair exchange rate could simply stay and pull back within its previous 1,000 pip range. So we can anticipate not only a pullback that takes prices to the preceding large quarter point, but when there is an unsuccessful transition into a new 1,000 pip range, it's not illogical for a quarter theory trader to anticipate that the market simply was not ready and willing at that point to transition the Aussie US dollar exchange rate into a new 1,000 foot range. The 1,000 foot range transitions, ladies and gentlemen, are not random occurrences. They do not happen because the market decided today on a whim to say, well, why don't we move for example, the Aussie dollar exchange rate above parity. There has to be strong enough fundamental reason for these 1,000 foot range transitions to occur. The underlying fundamentals must always justify a currency pair exchange rate into a new 1,000 foot range. Without any kind of fundamental justification, we can see these overshoots when, for example, a U.S. dollar sell-off be becomes over-exaggerated or extended. We can see a little bit of an extension into a new 1,000 foot range, but you can also see how quickly the market readjusts the Aussie dollar exchange rate. At this point, it, we overshot above parity. The Aussie dollar exchange rate was above parity into the new 1,000 foot range but how quickly the market readjusted it, and we saw the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar exchange rate quickly falling back into its previous 1,000 foot range. With the recent strengthening of the Australian dollar here in a recent month or so, we saw another attempt for the market to push the Aussie above parity with the U.S. dollar. This time around, we had a previous resistance level that a lot of traders would use as a point of reference to say, well, the next time the Aussie breaks above the parity level, then it could challenge that previous all-time high or multi-year high at the dollar zero one eighty two. But here's what I would ask. What happens after that? What's above the dollar zero one eighty two? Well, for a trader who's not familiar with the quarter theory, it's an open game. Right above 1.0182 multi-year resistance, there is simply no other historical point of reference all the way down to 1982 or 1983 that a support resistance trader can utilize. Previous resistance level established, even if one has to go back 30, 40 years, to say, well, if the Aussie dollar pair breaks above 1.0182, if there is another resistance level there, maybe the market would target that level. If there were a previous resistance level there, <clears throat> historically, that could be the case. But what if it isn't? 
What if there isn't any previous historic support or resistance level? What can the market challenge next? And, and what is a trader to do, <coughs> excuse me, as far as trying to figure out what could be the next price level that the market could target, which could be extremely helpful, as many of you know, as far as setting up realistic expectations, goals, price targets, and so forth, considering a trading opportunity. If a trader was not aware of my, <coughs> excuse me, of my quarter theory, then they would not anticipate that the next logical price point that the market could challenge if there was a decisive breakout above the previous multi-year high at 1.0182, this area here, could be the large quarter point at the dollar zero two fifty. So was it a coincidence that on the next attempt the Australian dollar transitioned above parity level and broke above 1.0182 multi-year resistance, the Australian dollar against the US dollar reached the sky as dollar zero two fifty five. Was that a coincidence? Well, to traders who are not familiar with the quarters theory, obviously that's a completely random number. Well, market moved up to 1.0255, and uh, all right. To a quarters theory trader, that was not something that was a coincidental occurrence, but rather an organized price move where a quarters theory trader was anticipating that a break above a dollar zero. 182 could easily challenge the large quarter point at the dollar zero two fifty. But also on the other hand, a trader who is familiar with the quarter theory in this example would also be aware that there may be some resistance that the market could encounter in the vicinity of that large quarter point at the dollar zero two fifty, which was the case with the Aussie dollar currency pair. And although the Aussie dollar pair completed that first large quarter of the new 1,000 pip range, which was our first requirement to recognize a successful 1,000 pip range transition on a retracement, because in most instances it's not unusual for us to also see a retracement after prices enter a new 1,000 pip range, they can easily retrace or, or pull back to these magnetic major large quarter points which in the case of the Aussie dollar pair is an even more magnetic level because it is the parity level, tracks a lot of traders. So on a pullback, obviously, the Aussie dollar pair pulls back to the major large quarter point at $1. It's not unusual, but that is where the second requirement that I've created comes. In order for us to recognize a successful 1,000 foot range transition, we have to not only see the completion of the first large quarter of 250 pips of each new 1,000 per frame. But on any pullbacks or retracements, prices must stay above the major large quarter point, which marks the beginning of the new 1,000 per range. In the case of the Aussie dollar pair, that did not happen. And so there were a couple of attempts in November and most recently in the last couple of weeks here where the Aussie dollar pair at least advanced a bit further, it completed the large quarter to a dollar zero two fifty, reached the new all time high at the dollar zero two fifty five. But on the pullback, you can see here in the days after that prices once again did not sustain above that parallel level. So in the future, that is a very important occurrence and development that traders should pay attention to when it comes to the Aussie dollar developments. The only way that the Aussie dollar pair will transition its exchange rate into the new 1,000 pip range is if it once again completes successfully this large quarter to a dollar zero two fifty, and then on a pullback stays above the major large quarter point. Then, if that were to happen, at that point, I also explained in my quarter theory that that's another benefit of being successfully able to recognize these 1,000 pip range transitions because. If there is a successful 1,000 pip range transition, if a currency pairs exchange rate completes the first large quarter of a new 1,000 pip range, on a pullback, it stays above the major large quarter point. Then at that point, we can anticipate even further advancement of currency exchange rates into the new 1,000 pip range. What would that mean? 
further advancement, not only back to the large quarter point at the dollar zero two fifth, but potentially even to the major half point of a new one thousand fifth range, which would be in the case of the Aussie dollar pair, the dollar and five cents level. That one thousand fifth range transition has not occurred successfully yet for the Aussie against the US dollar. There has to be, of course, strong enough fundamentals for these um, 1,000 pip uh, ranges. Now, I have a quick question here from Dry Desert, who says, when do you adjust your range once the price departs the 1,000 pip range you have been looking at for a while? In an upward move outside the previous range, would you simply get rid of the lowest previous line and add one more plus 250 pips on the previous uh, highest line? The answer is no. The answer is no. Okay, he says the question is answered. Okay, great. Because the you cannot change math. Okay? The quarters theory is based on a numeral system, the base 10 numeral system. You cannot change these ranges. And that's the beauty of the quarters theory, by the way. Because it relies on constant, never changing ranges. A large quarter is always 250 pips and a 1,000 pip range is always exactly 1,000 pips. And uh, it is always between two major whole numbers, major large quarter points uh, that define these 1,000 pip ranges. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the Euro dollar currency pairs attempt to transition recently its exchange rate into a new 1,000 pip range. And that was the new 1,000 pip range below a dollar and 30 cents. Euro dollar pair here was trading into the 1,000 pip range between dollar 40 and a dollar 30 cents. It made an attempt to transition its exchange rate in uh, early December, if you recall, end of November, with an overshoot below dollar 30 cents. With the, but, it, but it found a double bottom support at the dollar 29.67 or dollar 29.69. As a result of that. Of course, the first large quarter of the new 1,000 pip range below dollar 30, which was the quarter between dollar 30 and the dollar 27.50, was not successfully completed. We only moved about 30 pips below the dollar and 30 cents level. By no means that is a decisive entrance into the new large quarter, and by no means that is a decisive entrance into the new 1,000 pip range. We said the in order for us to see the first sign of a, the early warning sign of a successful 1,000 pip range transition, we have to see what? A completion of the very first large quarter of 250 pips of a new 1,000 pip range. That did not happen for the euro dollar pair on this attempt at the end of November, early December. As a result of the unsuccessful 1,000 pip range transition, the euro dollar currency pair did what? Stayed within its existing previous 1,000 pip range. It stayed above a dollar and 30 cents, and it began to trade in a range within between dollar and 30 cents, roughly, and dollar uh, and 35 cents, which is the large quarter point there at the dollar 35 cents, which I also call the exact half point, so-called major half point of the 1,000 pip range between dollar 30 and the dollar 40 cents. Dollar 35 cents established itself as the top of the range, major resistance for the euro dollar pair. As a result of that, we saw some fluctuations here from bottom of the range to the top of the range, top of the range toward the bottom of the range, back to the top of the range, back to the bottom of the range. And on a move recently, a couple of weeks ago, to dollar and 30 cents area, with the bottom of the range being dollar 29.69 as an exact price point, we even saw that. Uh, level being broken below. Well, it looked a couple of weeks ago that the euro dollar pair is going to make an attempt to transition once again its exchange rate below dollar thirty into the new one thousand pip range between dollar thirty and a dollar twenty cents. But let's take a closer look what happened once again. It looks like that large quarter, the first large quarter of the new one thousand pip range between dollar thirty and a dollar twenty seven fifth was not successfully completed. The Euro dollar pair, if you recall, Reached as low as, uh, what was it, $1.28 uh, something. Never completed the large quarter to $1.2750. And as a result of that, we saw what? Prices retracing, reversing back 
to the previous major large quarter point at the dollar thirty cents. But moreover, prices simply stayed within their existing one thousand per range. They stayed within the previous one thousand per range as a result of the unsuccessful completion of the first large quarter in an unsuccessful transition into the new one thousand per range. And so the euro dollar pair continued to trade within that previous one thousand per range and the range in the last couple of months between dollar thirty roughly and a dollar thirty five cents, which are a couple of large quarter points there that define that approximately the range that the euro dollar pair has been stuck within for a couple of months. In most recent several days, the euro dollar pair is now attempting to break above that large quarter point at the dollar and thirty five cents and perhaps attempt to continue further into the next large quarter at dollar thirty five cents potentially targeting the large quarter point at the dollar thirty seven fifty which we will take a little closer look in a few minutes so this is another example here where the euro dollar currency pair exchange rate did not actually complete uh, the first large quarter of a new one thousand foot range and there wasn't a successful one thousand foot range transition and the euro dollar exchange rate stayed within its previous existing 1,000 pip range. I wanted to give you an example very quickly of what was a successful 1,000 pip range transition. It happened for the euro against the Swiss franc. Euro Swiss exchange rate was trading within the previous 1,000 pip range, which was between dollar forty and a dollar thirty. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not dollars, it's actually Swiss francs. The exchange rate between the euro and the Swiss is measured in Swiss francs and centimes. So 1.30 and 1.40 centimes, uh, Swiss francs for one euro. When the euro Swissy made the first attempt to transition its exchange rate below 1.30, we had a bit of an overshoot below 1.30 here, and that happened in uh, late November, if I'm not mistaken. But as you can see, the quarter to 1.2750 was not successfully completed. As a result, the euro pulled back a bit, stayed within that previous 1,000 pip range above 1.30. But then on the next attempt, the euro Swiss exchange rate began to break below these previous lows. And then, it managed to complete the first large quarter of the new 1,000 pip range to 1.2750. So far, so good. One of our requirements at that point was met. Now, what we have to do at that point is monitor whether on pullbacks, the euro Swiss is going to stay below 1.30 to confirm that the 1,000 pip range transition is successful. There were a couple of pullbacks here for a couple of days. The euro Swiss was far from 1.30, never even retraced to it, and it simply continued advancing even further into that new 1,000 pip range. Where to next? To the large quarter point at 1.25, which would be the further advancement to the half point of the new 1,000 pip range. Unfortunately, uh, for the Euro bears at that point, the Euro Swiss even overshot below 1.25, it moved as low as 1.24, if you recall, managed to reach an all-time low the euro against the Swiss at that point. But then there was no further progression into the new 1,000 pip range. Euro Swiss on a price correction here. It's nothing but a price correction, as you can see. The euro has been dropping from about above 1.38 to about 1.34. That's about 1,400 pips <coughs> of a decline. And on my daily program, the All Things Forex broadcast, we've been taking a close look at these developments, and I say, well, it's a strong bearish trend for the euro against the Swiss. Obviously, it is a multi-year trend. It didn't happen yesterday. It didn't happen last month or uh, last couple of months. It's been going on since pretty much the last two or three years. If you were to take a look at a longer-term chart, like a monthly chart of the euro Swiss, you will see that this is not a trend that started yesterday. But the euro Swiss, although it was a strong bearish euro trend against the Swiss franc, it was long due for some price correction. We had some very, very significant declines in the most recent one since November. I said the euro has been dropping since above 1.38 to about 1.24. So up to 50% correction here. 
I said a few weeks back, I said up to 50% correction could bring the Euro-Swiss exchange rate up by about 700 pips. That's very easy to calculate. Because the previous decline was about 1,400 pips. 50% of that is 700 pips. So it wouldn't be surprising to see the market, if the market decides to go with such 50% retracement, for the Euro-Swiss exchange rate, not only to retrace to that major large four point at 1.30, but also perhaps to 1.31, which would be the exact, approximately exact, uh, 1.31 would be the approximate exact, approximate exact, that's a good combination, right? Uh, 50% uh, retracement level for the euro against the Swiss. But that was an example I wanted to give you of a successful 1,000 pip range transition as a result of which a couple of at least two large quarters of a new 1,000 pip range were successfully completed. That was the quarter be below 1.30 to 1.2750 and then 1.2750 to 1.25. Now, the euro-dollar pair is recently attempting to work on a new large quarter. And the new large quarter for the euro against the US dollar would be the quarter above the large quarter point at the dollar and 35 cents, potentially targeting the large quarter point at the dollar 37.50. Here's what your existing 1,000 pip range for the euro-dollar pair looks like. Here's your major large quarter point at the dollar 30 cents. Not a successful entrance and a transition into the new 1,000 pip range below dollar thirty between dollar thirty and dollar and twenty cents. Euro dollar pair exchange rate stays within its uh, existing range above dollar thirty. Moves to the large quarter point at the dollar thirty five cents on the move above dollar thirty. By the way, we'll see a couple of large quarters completed successfully between dollar thirty and dollar thirty two fifty, and then dollar thirty two fifty to dollar thirty five cents. Resistance at the dollar thirty four ninety eight right here, which was also the top of the range. Ladies and gentlemen, take a close look again how this guy's the large quarter point is at the dollar thirty five cents. The move up here for the euro against the US dollar in early December is a move to dollar thirty four ninety eight. To a lot of traders not familiar with my quarters theory, that's a completely random number, right? Dollar thirty four ninety eight. Completely random number to those traders. Not to us. We now know that the important price level to pay attention to in this case was dollar thirty-five, which is the large quarter point. It's also the major half point, by the way, of the existing one thousand pip range between dollar thirty and the dollar forty. So, I guess a lot of traders could say, "Well, dollar thirty-four ninety-eight was a random number, not to us." Obviously, that dollar uh, thirty-five cents large quarter point played a role of resistance at that point. As you can see in the last three days, it has been playing, again, a role as a resistance level, which the euro dollar pair is still attempting to overcome. And most successfully, by the way, that is happening in a trading session today, with the euro dollar pair finally making a further advancement further above the dollar and 35 cents level. So what's a trader, quarter theory trader to do when a currency pair is making an attempt to transition into a new large quarter. Just as we have these 1,000 pip range transitions, which happen on a larger scale within these large 1,000 pip ranges, so do we have the one the uh, transitions that happen into a new large quarter of 250 pips. There are very important factors in a price behavior of these currency exchange rates that we need to monitor and pay attention to as they attempt these uh, major currency pairs to transition their exchange rates into new large quarters. What are our thoughts? That's what we're going to talk about in the next couple of minutes. Here's the 60-minute or one-hour chart of the euro against the U.S. dollar, which gives us a little, uh, an opportunity to take a closer look and zoom in to what was happening there with the daily developments of this. This is the daily chart of the euro-dollar pair. We can see that for the last three days, prices are moving above, the, at least the highs of the days, are above dollar and 35 cents. It's more than obvious, the euro-dollar exchange rate is making an attempt to transition its exchange rate into a new large quarter, above dollar 35 
five cents, potentially working on a large quarter between dollar thirty-five cents and potentially targeting the next large quarter point at the dollar thirty-seven fifty. So here's what your existing large quarter for the euro dollar exchange rate looks like. Here's the large quarter point at the dollar thirty-five cents. Here's your large quarter point at the dollar thirty-seven fifty. Within each large quarter, I've designated some important price levels so that we can monitor the price behavior of a currency exchange rate when they move into these large quarters. And the first very important area of a new large quarter of 250 pips is what I call the hesitation zone. The name says it all. If prices enter a hesitation zone but never exit outside of it, then that could be a warning sign that there may not be any further progression of prices into the new large quarter. What is the hesitation zone? The hesitation zone is the first three small quarters of a large quarter of 250 pips. That is three small quarters of 25 pips each. In the case of the euro dollar pair, in the current existing large quarter, we have the large quarter point at the dollar thirty-five cents, and the end of the hesitation zone in this case would be dollar thirty-five seventy-five. Seventy-five pips above the large quarter point at the dollar thirty-five cents. Now, depending on the direction of the price move, the hesitation zone, if the euro dollar pair were to be moving above dollar thirty-five cents, above a large quarter point, will watch the hesitation zone above that large quarter point. But if the euro dollar pair breaks below dollar thirty five cents, then it would enter a new large quarter below dollar thirty five cents, and a large and the uh, first area that it would enter would be another hesitation zone at the dollar thirty five seventy five. And in a lot of instances, you're going to see what I call the dual hesitation zone play of prices, which tells us that the market is not very strong as uh, strongly decided, if you will. In which particular large quarter, uh, the, which particular large quarter will be worked on? There's a lot of hesitation, if you will, that occurs in these instances. For example, let's take a look in the last couple of days what the euro dollar pair has been doing, with the dollar and 35 cents level being the large quarter point there. It moves above dollar 35 cents, enters the hesitation zone, but never breaks outside of it. Prices pull back. To the large quarter point, do not stay above it. They break below it and they enter the hesitation zone below dollar thirty-five cents. They move to almost the dollar thirty-four cents level. Well, actually, even overshot um, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, below dollar thirty-four cents. Then they move back to dollar thirty-five cents, the large quarter point. Move above dollar thirty-five. Pull back. What's going to be important from now on? If a trader is trying to gauge and recognize some signs of strength or weakness, if the euro should continue to strengthen versus the U.S. dollar, we would not want to see what the euro has done in recent several days. We would not want to see the euro dollar pair breaking once again below the large quarter point at the dollar thirty-five. So a very telling sign going forward will be if the euro dollar pair this time around. Manages to stay above dollar thirty-five on these pullbacks. On top of that, we're seeing further advancement into that hesitation zone, a more decisive move, as I explained in my book, the quarter theory, into a new large quarter. Is not a move that overshoots a large quarter point by up to twenty-five pips, but rather a move that takes prices at least close to the end of the hesitation zone. That's the very first early telling sign. Of what could look like a successful 1,000, uh, not 1,000, but a successful large quarter transition. So the first thing we want to see is a decisive price move that takes prices to the end of the hesitation zone. Remember what happened yesterday? The euro dollar pair moved a little bit above dollar 35 cents, but it moved to a dollar 35, 23 or 24, if I'm not mistaken. That is not the kind of a decisive move that I'm referring to. That's simply an overshoot, what I call an overshoot above a large quarter point. 
This one here was at, uh, to about $1.34 uh, or $1.3538, wasn't it, a couple of days ago? It's a little more decisive, but still not a move to the end of the hesitations. And then on top of that, we saw on pullbacks the euro dollar pair breaking below $1.35 in the last couple of days. So it's going to be very important now that we've seen today the euro dollar pair reaching as high as $1.3667 or $1.3567 rather, or 66, which is not very far from $1.3575, the end of the hesitation zone. On pullbacks, if the euro dollar pair stays above $1.35 cents, at that point we can begin to anticipate further advancement into the new large quarter. Possibly back to the end of the hesitation zone, then to the half point of the quarter, which would be dollar thirty six twenty five, then to the whole number at the dollar and thirty seven cents preceding the large quarter point at the dollar thirty seven fifty, and then ultimately to a potential completion of the current large quarter to dollar thirty seven fifty. As you can see, each large quarter of two hundred and fifty pips has a number of important price levels within that large quarter that help us gauge price behavior and start recognizing some signs of exhaustion and a potential unsuccessful completion of a large quarter. What would be some of the first signs? Well, today we've seen the euro dollar pair moving to almost the end of the hesitation zone at the dollar thirty five seventy five. But what happens if the euro dollar pair stays within that range between the large quarter point at the dollar thirty five and the dollar thirty five seventy five and it never exits that hesitation zone, never breaks above that level? Could that be a telling sign of uh, failure of the euro dollar pair to complete that quarter to continue further above dollar thirty five and dollar thirty five seventy five on its way to potentially target dollar thirty seven fifty? An example I wanted to give you here is with the euro dollar pair. That's what I showed you in my previous webinar, if you recall. How the, uh, for example, um, the hesitation zone uh, played a key role of um, giving us the signs that the euro dollar pair is not going to uh, transition above dollar forty two fifty decisively and complete the quarter between dollar forty two fifty and a dollar forty five cents. Here again is the hesitation zone again. This is a different numerical rep representation. As you can see, it's a different numeral representation of a large quarter. It is now between dollar forty two fifty and a dollar forty five cents. And you have a previous large quarter between dollar forty and a dollar forty two fifty. Different numbers, same range, never changing, constant levels, and uh, the methodology is exactly the same. So a few months back, if you recall, we did this. Uh, webinar again, and I showed you the move of the euro dollar exchange rate right after the Fed's announcement on November 3rd. Euro dollar exchange rate made an attempt to start working on a quarter above dollar 42.50. Well, it reached as high as dollar 42.80 something. It never broke above the end of the hesitation zone at the dollar 43.25 of that quarter above dollar 42.50. And then what we saw is the euro dollar pair basically reversing back into its previous large quarter between dollar forty two fifty and a dollar forty cents. It completed that quarter and then the rest is history. It completed the entire one thousand fifth range after that between dollar forty and a dollar thirty cents. So that's another example that I gave you last time as to what happens if prices do not break outside of these hesitation zone areas. And that is the first possible sign of weakness. It is a first sign that we have a transition into the new large quarter. But is it going to be a successful one? Is it going to be a decisive one? That is why I said we don't want to only see the move to the end of the hesitation zone on pullbacks as the euro dollar pair has pulled back earlier today. We want to see it staying above the large quarter points at the dollar thirty five cents, which at least for the time being has been the case, if if I'm not mistaken, uh so far today. Today is also the final trading session of a trading week. We're ending the trading week. We have a very, very important, busy trading week ahead of us. And I'm doing these weekly webinars now on Sundays. 
at 8 p.m. Eastern time in preparation for the new trading week. You can always go to uh, my website uh, over the weekend under education on the home page. You're going to see uh, a banner that says pre-educational webinar. You can click on it and it will take you to the page where you can, ex uh, you can register for the Sunday weekly outlook webinars. That's a webinar that I do that gives uh, the top 10 spotlight economic events that every trader should pay attention to in a new trading week. And then we'll look at the major currency pairs and we'll discuss how these important economic events next week for each new trading week could impact the major currencies going forward. So uh, make sure to tune in to those. But um, it will be a very important week uh, next week for the U.S. dollar with the Fed interest rate announcement coming up. There's a ton of important data. We also have the GDP report from the United States as well next Friday. Two very, very important uh, economic events that are coming from the United States. And throughout the week, we have very, very important data as well from uh, the U.S. and uh, from around the world. Now, I wanted to show you here some more examples of um, these uh, transitions between uh, 1,000 uh, between the uh, large quarters. And uh, if you recall, the last webinar I showed you the pound against the U.S. dollar, which was making an attempt to transition into a large quarter point above dollar 62.50. Moved as high as almost dollar forty three cents, uh, or I'm sorry, that was dollar sixty three cents. That's a typo. Never exited that hesitation zone above dollar sixty three twenty five. Quickly reversed, and it, we started seeing this dual hesitation zone fluctuations or dual hesitation zone play, where we enter hesitation zone above a large quarter point, then we enter the hesitation zone below a large quarter point, and so forth and so forth. And then finally, the pound dollar pair never broke outside of the hesitation zone above dollar sixty-two fifty, but it managed to break below the end of the hesitation zone below dollar sixty-two fifty, which was dollar sixty-one seventy-five. And then we moved to the half point of the large quarter to dollar sixty-one twenty-five, and then to the large quarter point ultimately to complete the large quarter at the dollar and sixty cents. So. As you can see, there was a lot of examples, uh, and hopefully you are going to continue to pay close attention, at least for those of you who are not familiar with my quarter theory, uh, from now on to the rest of your trading careers, I hope, you will be able to pay close attention to these large quarter points, to the price behavior of these currency pairs. And if you would like to find out more information about the quarter theory, um, you can pick up my book, which is available everywhere. Uh, you can look at fx3.com and order it there. You can uh, look at my website, allthingsforex.com. And uh, I'm also looking forward to seeing you again Monday through Friday at my All Things Forex live daily program, which you can also listen to uh, on my website, allthingsforex.com. Thank you all very much for attending the webinar today. Hopefully I was uh, helpful as far as helping you learn some new things today. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again in the near future. Have a great weekend.